the coalition that Machen put together to fight liberalism was one thing, mm -hmm. and very thankful for all that joined. Uh, uh, for instance, uh, uh, John ma mentioned Ockengay, mm -hmm. uh, uh, who uh, Harold Ockengay was in the original classes at Westminster, and uh, there he would have been classmates with a figure like Carl McIntyre, and they couldn't be any further apart. They had a career, two careers of building competing empires. Right. Where Akengay had Fuller, Christianity Today, and the National Association of Evangelicals. McIntyre had the um, American uh, ACC, uh, the Christian Beacon, right. and Faith Seminary. Very good. Uh, yeah. the two, two, two competing empires, uh, both, both uh, we, we, which shared one conviction that Westminster wasn't for them. The OPC wasn't for <laughs> yeah, them. Yeah, the OPC. But see, Machen, Machen was for them. Machen could hold them together. And so what happens was, well, after the 1936 and the, and the new church is formed, um, and, and Machen dies, those fault lines become much more apparent. And so first there's the, the McIntyre uh, uh, departure, uh, because the OPC was not going to be fundamentalist. Uh, we were not going to, uh, on temperance, uh, say something the Bible wasn't going to say. And on regard to the, the confession of faith that we were going to use, we wanted to use what was doctrinally, we believe, the best, not what would give us the best case in a civil court for church property in regard to continuity with uh, the, the mainline church. And in regard to eschatology, we were going to have, uh, uh, we're going to say that dispensationalism fractured the covenant of grace. Right. And we could not be an option for officers. And McIntyre couldn't live with that. Wangay had left prior to even the formation of the uh, the OPC. There's that great letter from the the uh, friend, the lady friend that Machen had yeah. in Boston, and when she says to Machen, that that guy from your seminary, the one with the funny name, <laughs> he's now the pastor at Park Street. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, and so there's that uh, great uh, little little thing, but. If you put in his place Ed Ryan, you have the same type of aspiration um, in regard to what uh, they were aspiring to be. And so now, for those who filled in behind Ed Ryan, it was a different coalition in, in the, the young church than those fundamentalists. So, for instance, I, I'm the fascinating figure figure is Robert Strong. He's the pastor of the largest OPC church at the time, Calvary OPC in Willow Grove, Pennsylvania. And uh, he is totally supportive of Ryan and this agenda. But at the same time, he, doctrinally, he's so all mill, thoroughly all mill in his eschatology, that he writes for like six months in The Guardian a series that's quite very well done on eschatology. So it's so vastly different from the, the, the fight of 36, 37 in regard to the type of, of arguments that are going on. And, and, and he, at the time, was the pastor of Van Til. He was the pastor of Stonehouse. He was the pastor of Young. I mean, and, and they were, and there were certain things for, that they were committed to. Uh, they were all committed uh, to Christian day schooling. So they all gathered together to start the Willow Grove Christian Day School, which soon thereafter became Philmont Christian Academy. Uh, which they is even so hired E.J. Young as a bus driver. Yeah, right? Stonehouse and Young as your bus drivers are the greatest <laughs> things going. I would have, I probably would have enrolled just to, to just go to ride to school. Rides. And, and so bus driver until Ralph Cramden came along. Yeah, that's right. So the so the issue in 1941-42 is um, who doesn't love Robert Strong, you know, or this the 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 the, the southern graciousness of this and so so the the issues are much more uh, subtle but yet at the same time it could not be any more dramatic in that if you go down the line that ed ryan was wanting with the committee of nine um you were looking at a much broader church it was going to be uh not primarily defined 
by a uh, reform confessionalism, even though he was f- confessional. I don't want to say Ryan wasn't confessional or he didn't, but he wanted to, uh, he would have been the type that let's don't put Orthodox Presbyterian in this name of this church. You know, let's just get them here first. And that's the most important thing. And then we will fill them in later. And Fantel was quite the opposite. You know, um, you know, this, the full orb reformed faith is the gospel. Yeah. And this becomes the conflict. Yeah. To put it, uh, what, what Woolley would say, um, uh, in terms of uh, linking, uh, the, uh, ambition of Ryan with the ambition of McIntyre was that, uh, simply put, they wanted to read about themselves in a newspaper. Mm-hmm. That Very was, so. that was the kind of, um, um, th- that was a healthy church. And in discontent, he contrasted that with confessional fidelity. That was that was malignant discontent, and healthy discontent were those who aspire to see the church more faithful, more consistent in its expression of full orb Christianity. Mm. Ryan, you know, and 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 Woolley put this in deliberately and uh, uh, um, exaggerated terms. You can you can you can have that healthy discontent or you can read about yourself in the newspaper you can't do both um, meaning you can't you, you you've got to choose one as your as mm-hmm. your as your ambition your master or and, something. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah you and and to choose the former means to refuse to measure the health of the church in in worldly categories 